Hey everybody, what up? Uh, so it's been a while. I'm going to start doing YouTube occasionally a little bit more often than I have been. Um, anyway, I hope everybody is doing well and I'm going to have to like try to rebuild this back up because I know that like uh, when you step away from YouTube, like everything just kind of drops and uh, it's all about what have you been doing for me lately, which is very much like that in tech too. Um, I would describe that as like you could have like successful projects and, and be successful and pounding stuff out for six months, a year, five years, seven years. And IT is all about like, oh, we're on a new project now. How's that new project going? We don't really care that you did stuff 10 years ago or five years ago or six months ago. Um, but no, all that said, everything's been good. Um, according to all like the naysayers, I would think that we'd be out of a job right now with uh, chat GPT. But I'll probably have to like wait a year and then I can be like, hey, look, we still have jobs. Um, so just talking about tech and keeping it on focus with that, I have to say like um, I'm definitely not a naysayer when it comes to like ChatGPT, uh, generative AI or any of that. Uh, there is definitely a place for that. So I actually pay for both Co GitHub Copilot and um, ChatGPT. And honestly, both of them have helped me. And Chat GPT, like if I had to choose one, I would choose Chat GPT more than uh, GitHub Copilot. But there has been some times, like it was a couple weeks ago, but I had this like unique um, like error, and it was like it was like a mocking thing. I was trying to mock like functions, and it just it was more difficult than I almost forget the problem that I was trying to solve already. But it was something to do with an obscure Jest test case using Node.js TypeScript uh, and all that in React. Um, but I ended up like plugging in the error message uh, with an explanation of like what I was trying to do. And ChatGPT figured that out. So like when, when they get it right, um, I think it's a pretty great feeling because you're like, damn, that, that saved me a lot of time. Who knows how long it would have taken me to Google search all that. And, uh, and that is where like, I honestly, honestly it shines. So for any new programmer out there, like I do feel like really any programmer, these are all tools that we're, we're going to have to become uh, accustomed to using. And you're at risk of being outpaced by up and comers that are going, going to use these tools um, better than you can. So um, for me, I feel like it's a necessary skill to learn how to prompt these uh, generative AI um, chatbots and stuff to, to get them to do what you want to do. The downside, though, I think is um, for people that are non-programmers and they try to get code suggestions from chat B G GPT, uh, it's wrong quite a bit, right? And, or at least for me, it, 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 it spits out some stuff that is not quite accurate quite a bit. And as, an, as a programmer has been doing it for a while, like, it's still helpful because then you could still get like, the gist of what it's trying to say um, and be like, oh, maybe I can do it this way or change it this way or that. I used to have to have those moments in my sleep, waking up in the middle of the night after working on something for six days. And uh, that was like, I feel like a common thing early on in my programming days. These days, if something is stumping me for more than like four hours or so, that's when I say F it, I get up, I walk away, and uh, I'm usually able to like figure it out the next morning. Um, but anyway, yeah, ChatGPT, I think for experienced programmers, you can take the incorrect prompt, uh, responses and make sense of them relatively easily. Whereas like if you're not a skilled programmer, you're probably more in the weeds at that point than if you would have just tried to figure out the problem and, and coded your way through it. Because making mistakes in coding is like an absolute must. But when you're trying to learn and you're reading mistakes from something that you think is right, that sounds like insanity to me. Um, so all that said, yeah, I think that these tools are going to, um, you know, definitely need to be adopted and I adopt them myself and I think that they're helpful and I'm glad we have them. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I just thought of, like, uh, there was this phrase, it was like, if, if, if everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. And I think that sounds great on the surface because I'm like, yeah, you know, in the corporate world, like everything seems like a priority, right? Um, 
But then they tell you, well, you got to watch burnout and you have to push back and, you know, set proper boundaries and all this and that. And, um, <clears throat> and, and that if everything's a priority, then nothing is a priority. But I think there's another alternative to that. And that is that it, everything's simply a priority. That's, that's, that's life. And that, <laughs> that's what you get paid a lot of money to do. You got to have 15 different priorities and they're all basically priority number one. And you can spend a bunch of time trying to figure out how to push back on like, I need to say that I can do this, this, and this, and this, or, and then not do this. And then I need to have a bunch of explanations and reasons as to why. And then I need to communicate that to somebody who doesn't have nearly the expertise or maybe the uh, subject matter expertise or whatever it is, um, or even just a non-technical audience or any of that. Or you could just simply be like, just everything's a priority, get it done, you know? Um, just don't burn yourself out. And that is possible. I think it's possible. So it's kind of where I'm at in my career, you know? I, uh, I just take care of things um, the best way that I can. And it seems to work out. So, yeah, other than that, you know, honestly, everything's great. I am going to start doing YouTube videos again. I miss talking about tech topics. Um, there's a lot of stuff I feel like that I read about and I talk about, or I used to talk about, and, um, you know, that aspect is sort of missing in my life. I like to, to talk about things, and I, I uh, plan to do that. So all that said, though, life is, uh, is good. You know, the, the markets are still what they are, but... Um, as long as we have jobs, then I think, you know, things are good. I just got back from Europe. I spent a few days in uh, Portugal. I've been to the beach. Um, taken several trips, actually, since I've stopped doing YouTube. And also, I'm working on a video game. So, unfortunately, I haven't been making um, a lot of progress with that lately. But I, uh, I took a week off. Um, and did like a staycation on top of all this other travel I've been doing. And that was great too, because I was actually like visiting all these like local places around the DC area that I never go to. Uh, but in that time, I basically got into Unreal Engine. And, uh, and this was after getting back into Unity. And I've been using Unity probably, I feel like for a decade. And I'm not an expert, like I'm not a game developer, but every time I go into Unity, I have to relearn how to do basically everything. And, and it's, uh, it's so frustrating uh, whenever I'm dealing. So I always get out of game development just as quickly. And then I discovered Unreal Engine, right? And I've used Unreal Engine before. But this time around, I started using Unreal Engine and I really started taking it seriously as far as like learning how to do things. And I like it so much better than Unity. So I've always been a proponent for Unity. And even with my C-sharp, expertise uh, that I, I have that I've been removed from for a couple of years. I still like Unreal Engine way better. So then to make e things even more interesting, I decided to break out my Rift S. I bought an Oculus Rift S. I, I swear I've only used it like five times. And every time it was like for 30 minutes, like, oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. But it's just not practical for somebody like me to throw on a headset and play video games. And, and for me, like, I can't really play video games like I used to just because I'm so busy, basically, from the moment I get up to the moment I go to sleep. Um, but when I do play video games, I like to play something that I can jump into very quickly and then jump out of. I like to play online. So essentially, I play like just a handful of games. And really, one of my favorite games is Rocket League. Uh, so I'm actually pretty good at that, probably like a solid bronze level. <laughs> I've been playing that game for like almost since it came out. And I'm pretty good, and I talk a lot of smack. Um, so all that said, I, I, I got into Unreal, and then I started using the Rift S, and I realized, like, holy crap, I can make VR games. And um, that sort of it changed everything. So the video game I'm working on, which it won't be ready for a long time at this point, probably six months to a year. I'm hoping for six months, but, um, you know, it definitely is like a hobby, and... I'm mostly done, honestly, like with the, the premise of, of what the game is going to be. But now I'm working like on the nitty gritty stuff. And anytime I'm tired, like so most of the time, like after I get off work, I'm like 
almost too tired to mess with it. So I, I've really broken that down into very, very minute details of like, I'm just going to accomplish this one thing and I'm going to stop. Um, but anyway, for a few weeks after that staycation, when I jumped into that, like it was pretty much all consuming. Uh, I was knocking things out at work and I was like doing my, my normal coding routine that I've, I used to do, which is like staying up until late, um, thinking that I'm you know this close to finishing the project. But uh, anyway, I sort of tamed that down. I've learned over the years, like some things are just humongous tasks and you can't rush them. And this is one of those things. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll share more details with that soon. I don't think that it's going to be any like sort of like, you know, major success, but I'll be honest, like I, I've, I'm building a game from something that I've had in my mind since I was a child. And I also had plans to do it for seven straight years and, and dabble with it here and there. And like, I feel like the technology wasn't there. My skill set wasn't there. The game engine changed. That's something that's another phrase that I, I heard the other day. It was um, somebody shared on Unity. It was like, you know, th there's like, this the anything that that is stable in unity is deprecated and then everything else is like experimental and that seems to be my experience with it uh, but anyway the point being is like in a few short months i really did like take something that was in my head for a very long time and then in my head from a coding game development perspective for seven years and i made more more um progress on it in two months than i had in seven years so I'm excited about it. Honestly, that, that's a lot of fun, and it's very different from, uh, from just typical programming that I do uh, these days. So anyway, I'm just sort of blabbing on. I'm going to start talking again. Like, uh, like I said, I, I will start uh, sharing some of my thoughts about what's going on in the tech world. But yeah, everything's generative AI still, you know, all about AI. And uh, I think just like in tech, and we've seen it a million times, I think things can be very, very... Um, hyped up and this is one of those things that is uh, hyped up but it is also something that is going to change the world like a lot of technology has before it um, is it the second coming of the internet maybe maybe I, I mean we'll see uh, but all I know is you have to embrace it at this point and um, you should use it to the best of your ability and it's not very expensive so uh, but Yep, other than that, just uh, nice seeing everybody and take care. I will talk to you soon. Bye.